Tesla shares closing higher as CEO Elon Musk teases out his master plan part three uh, in a tweet last night writing, quote, master plan three, the path to a fully sustainable energy future for Earth will be presented <laughs> on March 1st, ending it with the future is bright. The Model Y is now the best-selling vehicle in California. We're not talking best-selling electric vehicle, best-selling vehicle overall. It passed the Toyota Camry to become number one in the state. And the Camry, along with the Model 3, which, by the way, was number two in total sales, they helped Tesla move all the way up to number two among brand popularity for all the automakers in California. In this video, Tesla stock has almost doubled in 2023, and it's early February. If only I had seen this coming. I'm so very surprised. If only I realized Tesla stock around $100 per share, approximately a $300 billion market cap didn't make sense. If only. Meanwhile, Tesla's Model Y continues to take over the entire fucking planet. Definitely didn't see this one coming either. Definitely didn't see that coming either. And Elon Musk teases Tesla's master plan part three to be unveiled in less than a month. By the way, have you joined Patreon yet? Oh, you have? Oh yeah, right, cool. I was going to say you should join because, you know, nearly 300 exclusive videos, but you're already a member, so no problems. Let's move on. Tesla stock has closed over $200 per share for the first time in 2023, up another 2.28% today, which is pretty impressive given most stocks in the market went the opposite direction. Year to date, Tesla stock now up over 86%, almost doubling. Tesla stock's 52-week low, just $101.81 late 2022. We've now seen Tesla stock effectively double since this recent low in the span of just over one month. The all-time chart illustrates this fairly clearly. A very, very violent upswing. But once again, silly old me didn't realize that this was an opportunity. So instead of buying with every spare cent, I just cried in the corner and panic sold a few shares because that's what everyone else was doing. Obviously, I'm just joking. I bought all the way down. I was telling everybody exactly what I was doing, what I thought, and also pointing out, this doesn't make sense. You're crying, I'm buying. I think my decisions will age rather well. And well, I'll let you be the judge as to whether or not my buying all the way down has aged well or not. And hey, if you happen to be one of the folks who got swept up in the emotional panic and sold near two year lows, it could be worse. No, it actually could be worse. It's not much worse than that. It's pretty embarrassing for you, not gonna lie, but at least you aren't a Tesla short seller who doubled down on their bet against Tesla near two year lows because boy oh boy, did these brain dead, emotionally damaged children come out of the woodworks as Tesla went down. So they're finally going bankrupt, I'm doubling down. It just, I couldn't believe it. I just, I mean, seriously, they'll never learn. I'm sure many of these tweets have since been deleted, but all I will say on that topic is, you can't fix stupid. Tesla may have relocated its headquarters from California to Texas, uh, but its cars are still dominating the Golden State's market. Phil Bo joins us now with more. Hey, Phil. Hey, Joe, this is a good indication of just how popular Tesla has become in California. And why we focus on this, California is the largest, most competitive auto market within the United States. And yes, you can say they're early adopters of EVs. This is a clear indication of that. The Model Y is now the best-selling vehicle in California. We're not talking best-selling electric vehicle, best-selling vehicle overall. It passed the Toyota Camry to become number one in the state. And the Camry, along with the Model 3, which, by the way, was number two in total sales, they helped Tesla move all the way up to number two among brand popularity for all the automakers in California. So Tesla's Model Y now officially the number one selling vehicle of any kind in California. Who could have seen this coming? Certainly not me, and I certainly can't say what's coming next, which if I did, I would probably say what's coming next is Tesla's Model Y <laughs> climbing up the ranks and becoming the number one selling vehicle on earth in just about every region, country, state, you name it, over time. Not only will Tesla's Model Y soon break the number one spot globally for vehicles sold by unit volume, then it will go on to sell more units in a single year than any vehicle has ever done in any year in the history of Earth. And then it will continue and go on to sell two, three, maybe four times as many vehicles, roughly four million units in a single calendar year. But of course, I don't see that coming. So I'm going to be very surprised when it happens. The amount of surprise will look like this. I'm so surprised. Toyota still dominates. It has 17% of the market, but Tesla has now 
gone past Chevy, Honda, Ford. Now one out of every 10 vehicles sold in California is a Tesla. Remember, in their annual sales, they are targeting 1.8 million vehicles to be sold this year. They don't break them down by country in terms of total sales, but we've known for a long time that the U.S. and in particular California, critical to the success and the growth of Tesla. And again, the target is 1.8 million. And as you take a look at shares of Tesla, keep in mind that the next big vehicle that they plan to roll out is the Cybertruck. Production is expected to start later this year. You'll start to see them really in decent numbers, middle of 24, I would imagine. And guess where you're probably going to see a lot of them, Joe? California. And why is that important? Southern California, Joe, is the largest pickup truck market in the country. And a large percentage of those buyers in Southern California are lifestyle buyers. They don't buy it for the utility because they're going out on the ranch, etc. They buy it for the look, the appearance, the feel. So I'll be curious to see what the Cybertruck does when it rolls out in terms of their sales in California. Just between you and I, I expect Cybertruck is going to outsell the majority of pickup trucks available in the United States within just a few years. And it does have a chance, keyword chance, of taking out the number one spot. I don't expect this will happen instantly, but it is absolutely a possible outcome. It's going to take Tesla years, literally years, just to get through the reservation backlog. And for every vehicle that is purchased and then a consumer takes out on roads, has parked in their driveway, on a work site, more people see this thing, see what it can do, are surprised by what it can do, and ultimately order one. If I was a traditional automotive manufacturer making a traditional looking pickup truck, electric or ice, I would be panicking, big time. Cybertruck makes a traditional pickup truck look like a girl's toy. And yes, I did say girl's toy. Come at me, bro. Ford Tough ain't going to hold up once the Cybertruck is on roads. In the country's largest auto market, one brand is reigning supreme. The Tesla Model Y becoming the best-selling vehicle in California. Phil Bo is here with the headlines and the implications, Phil. You know, Kelly, I think this is a stat that when I mention it to people, more than anything, what I hear from folks is, really? The entire state, this is the most popular vehicle? So the whole really thing that Phil's talking about there, yeah, that's going to happen everywhere. California's first, but it's gonna happen everywhere. Really? You mean one category killing product per category is the way to succeed in the automotive business? Instead of having 25 different models in every single segment, you just make one extremely compelling, excellent product, and you can sell more individual units per year than anyone in the history of the automotive industry for a single model? Really? Really? In a nutshell, Model Y over the next few years in terms of sales, Surprise, surprise, motherfuckers. Model Y is gonna break every record ever for automotive sales for a single product. And every step of the way, really? 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 Stay tuned. See you in 2025, we'll check back in and see what's happened since. And then they step back and they say, well, I realize that California is more of an early adoption state when it comes to EVs, so I shouldn't be surprised. And look, the Model Y hits in the heart of the most popular segment, which is that small SUV crossover utility vehicle segment, very popular across the board, not just in, you know, if you want to go electric, but if you were going to internal combustion engine vehicles. So the Model Y is now the number one selling vehicle in California, by the way, by a wide margin. I think they sold 87,000 last year. Next closest, the Model 3 at 78,000. Number one and number two. Could this be an early indication of the future of automotive sales everywhere on Earth? <laughs> yes. Don't tell anyone yet. I'm still buying Tesla's our secret, right? Good. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. You did it, Mary. Then you got to go all the way down to the RAV4, which is at like 59,000. So they're way, way ahead of everybody in the state. I have heard also that that Model Y is extremely uh, top selling in Europe. Do you know any details there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Model, look, the Model Y is the vehicle that drives sales more than anything else for Tesla, whether it's here in the U.S., and in particular in California, or in Europe. That, that is the segment where people want a vehicle right now, in that crossover small SUV segment. It's not large SUVs. It's certainly not within sedans. And look at your choices, Tyler, in that segment. What other choices do you have? You can mention the Mustang Mach-E which some people look at and they go, really, is that a crossover? Yes, it technically is a crossover. Um, but other than that, there are not a whole lot of choices that plays into the popularity of the Y. Uh, Phil, what are the prospects for them achieving the status in other states like Texas, another big market, for instance? Very good. Very good. It just, it's, a, it's a matter of when does the competition come in for that segment of vehicle? Now, 
in Texas or in Florida or in other states, you've got a number of other factors that play in. You don't have a, uh, the, the type of EV adoption that you do in California. In California, one out of every 10 vehicles sold is a Tesla. People in California, they've gravitated to EVs long before the people in Texas started to or in Florida. Who are Those are the two other top five states when it comes to EV adoption. So will, will the Y ultimately be number one selling in Texas or Florida? Yes, it will. It'll take some time, but it will happen. Remember, the Austin factory is solely producing Model Ys in first stage of its production ramp. Model Ys, I estimate 500,000 per year for stage one production capacity. That's in addition to Fremont, which is a few hundred thousand more Model Ys per year. These vehicles will almost exclusively be sold in the United States. More Model Ys produced, more Model Ys sold, Model Y becoming number one selling vehicle state after state after state after state. Long ways to go. I'm not sure that that happens. That's simply because there's just not the great adoption of EVs in those states as there is out in California. My eye check around the New York area is that if Tesla is not the top brand, and I'm talking about all models, not just the Y, if it's not the top brand, right. it's number two or three. I, I, it, they, they, you just see an awful lot of them. Where do they stand with respect to a pickup truck? Tesla. You mean in terms of the Model Y relative to, to no, sales no, no. Where or is, Tesla overall? Is Tesla talking about do they have a pickup in, sure. coming out? The Cybertruck. The Cybertruck. Well, they've got the Cybertruck that's coming out later this year in terms of production. Goes into production later this year. Right. Do we see them in large numbers until mid, late 24? That's probably when we do. And by the way, that should help them in California. Why? The Cybertruck is not a truck that you're going to sell to a guy who owns a ranch in the middle of Kansas. Yeah, so I've got to call BS here, Phil. Now, pay close attention to what happened because this is a recurring theme. People assume the Cybertruck looks so different to a conventional pickup truck, it can't possibly fulfill the same needs of consumers who buy a traditional looking pickup truck. Therefore, consumers who actually use a pickup truck as a pickup truck won't buy a Cybertruck because Cybertruck can't do what a pickup truck can do. This is some broken ass thinking and one of the biggest disconnects, a huge opportunity I think many investors are overlooking. It will take time. Cybertruck is very unconventional looking. But the only things it can't do, the traditional pickup truck can do. And when I say traditional pickup truck, I'm only saying some traditional pickup trucks. The only things it can't do is fold down the sides of the bed if you need a flat bed. Some instances that will be applicable, but they will be rare. Alternatively, maybe you need an extra, extra, extra long bed. Cybertruck ain't gonna help. But outside of that, this near indestructible monstrosity of a machine is gonna do everything as well or better than a traditional pickup truck, including having onboard electricity, power outlets, an air compressor, air suspension, ramp in the bed, near indestructible. I mean, hello. This is one of the biggest misconceptions. It is a huge mistake. In fact, it's arrogant to assume that the Cybertruck will not be able to meet the needs of most traditional pickup truck users who actually need a pickup truck for a pickup truck. I acknowledge the unusual appearance will cause a few people initially to think it's dumb. But once people start seeing what they can do, it's gonna be a very different story. Most people at this point, I believe, see Cybertruck and assume, well, no one who uses a pickup truck is going to buy this, so therefore it's just a lifestyle vehicle. People will buy it because they want something that looks unique, looks weird, looks like it just drove off a movie set. And there's no real excuse for this other than ignorance. I genuinely believe over the long term, Cybertruck could become the number one selling pickup truck in the United States. I'm not saying it'll happen tomorrow, but it absolutely could happen. Very few people believe this is possible. If you're curious, go back and watch the second video I ever posted on this YouTube channel. Cybertruck is engineering genius, and it will be copied. My thoughts have not changed. You are, however, going to sell it to somebody in Southern California looking for a lifestyle vehicle, looking to make a statement. And by the way, Southern California, largest pickup truck market in the country. Why larger wouldn't than it, Dallas, why larger wouldn't than it Houston. Work for the farmer, it is the place. Why wouldn't it work for the farmer in Kansas or Texas? Because I was thinking that a pickup truck would be the kind of vehicle segment that would work. Have you seen the Cybertruck? I... Oh, God, this is going to be awkward. I looked at it and I made a judgment. Because it looks different, it can't do the things... <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it's, I have, well, it's not, I don't well the Cybertruck's... It. Yeah, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a traditional-looking pickup okay. truck. That's right. the main reason That's why. That's the main reason. Okay. And, and also, the other thing to keep in mind, rural America, Tyler, extremely, extremely brand loyal when it comes to pickup trucks. Yeah. My daddy had a Ford. I'll I'm drive a Ford. A Ford. He had a Chevy. I'll drive a Chevy. Yeah, they I stick with their brands. Feel, and you've got... You've got the Lightning, and you've got other electric pickups on the way in those brands. And obviously, Rivian has their their series, which has been uh, quite popular. But I, 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 does the Tesla, does Cybertruck have any towing capacity to speak of? Because the whole problem with obviously electrifying cars or, yes. or trucks like that is that it takes incredible battery capacity to be able to move things in any sustained way. Uh, you know, big loads like yeah. that that would make it more functional. 
it, it will have towing capacity. Have they released the specs yet? Not to a point where you could sit there and say, well, I can definitely compare it to Model XYZ in terms of pickup trucks. But yes, it will have the towing capacity. I, I will be honest. I kind of I kind of want to drive this. I'm going to show you. A, a truck? The cyber truck. The cyber this truck. is the craziest looking. Notice what just happened. Somebody who isn't really well informed about the capabilities of Cybertruck made the inaccurate judgment that it's not going to be suitable for a traditional pickup truck owner. Then went on to say, I mean, she's almost giddy about wanting to get in this thing because it looks so fucking weird and or cool. And this is important. Cybertruck appeals to two distinct categories of buyers. People who need the functionality of a pickup truck. It's utilitarian as fuck. It's going to do everything they need and then some. Aside from the example earlier, the flat and or longer bed. That's it. Those are the exceptions. Otherwise, it'll suit everyone's needs even better. But there's a second category of buyer who don't need a pickup truck, which is the majority of people who own a pickup truck today, who will also be interested in this thing, assuming they can get over the aesthetics or they appreciate the unique appearance. Cybertruck is so unique, so cool, so different, that there's going to be a group of people that just want to drive this thing because of that very fact. So I believe Tesla's Cybertruck is not only going to suit the vast majority, 90 plus percent of the pickup truck buyers in traditional pickup truck buyer that actually needs the functionality of a pickup truck, but a massive, massive group of consumers who just want something that looks weird and all cool and all like the Cybertruck. And there's nothing else on the market even close to Cybertruck. Notice how excited she sounded just to get in this thing. Can you think of a single other vehicle on earth ever that's had this kind of reaction from some people? I just love it so much. The aesthetic so different that they're that excited to get in one of these things and they don't want to get in it because they use the functionality of a pickup truck. Don't sleep on this fact. I think Cybertruck's total addressable market is much larger than anyone is expecting. Let me know in the comments below if anyone watching will be driving a Cybertruck in the future. If it's really out later this year, Phil, I can't wait to see them on the streets. But that, you know, their ability to get it to market remains. Hold your breath, Kelly. How yeah. long have we been hearing about the Cybertruck? Time. Truck. Yeah. Supposed to go into production later this year. If it goes into production, you'll really start to see numbers where you can say, oh, there's a Cybertruck mid to late 24. Yeah. kind of why I lost track of it because it's exactly. been talked about for so long. I couldn't so remember long. whether it's out. I've not seen one, but, uh, but anyway, obviously I haven't seen one because it hasn't been produced. Yeah. Anyhow, Phil, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Tesla shares closing higher as CEO Elon Musk teases out his master plan part three uh, in a tweet last night writing, quote, master plan three, the path to a fully sustainable energy future for Earth will be presented <laughs> on March 1st, ending it with the future is bright. Uh, no subtle promises, no subtle guarantees when it comes to Mr. Musk, Praz. What is this master plan? You know, you kind of got to tease out what he's, what he's alluding to, right? And he's talking about not just, you know, our sustainable future in terms of energy creation, but also what are you going to be driving there, right? That's, that's their company. That's the whole thing. And so, you know, obviously a couple of takeaways that I'm thinking, a couple of things I'm looking forward to on March 1st is, you know, are we going to hear more about that Gen 3 cheap platform, that robo taxi? Yes, that will be one of the key focal points in Master Plan Part 3. Tesla's going to unveil the next-gen platform. And it won't just be a single vehicle. It is a platform. The SNX were a single platform. The 3 and Y were a single platform. This next-gen will include multiple different vehicles. It's all but certain we'll hear about a more affordable, potentially more compact Tesla vehicle, ideally designed around autonomy. But there will probably be a range of vehicles built on this platform. This platform may also expand to include products like a van. Additionally, I think there's a good probability, maybe 69% chance, that we'll hear about non-automotive products, e.g. HVAC. But the real crux in Master Plan Part 3 is it's all about scale. How in the f does Tesla produce enough batteries to go in enough vehicles and enough energy storage products to transition the entire planet to sustainable energy? That will be detailed in Master Plan Part 3. There'll be discussion about manufacturing techniques, the alien dreadnought factory design, making improvements there. We may even see some new innovations in terms of manufacturing techniques that we haven't seen before, stuff that isn't completely done but Tesla intends to implement to help them produce more vehicles more affordably at larger scale and faster. If history is anything to go by, Wall Street will be confused and then they just simply won't believe what they've heard. Most investors, likewise. Finance media, the same. Institutional investors, the same. But I do expect a few Tesla retail investors will probably understand what's up and we'll be learning the details about this in just a few weeks time. Musk says he needs to see 20 million cars made by 20, 2030 a year to kind of see that vision probably going to result in 12 new gigafactories. So we're going to hear more about when are they going to make those factories, right? Where are they going to be? And also, what about resources? Are we going to see more deals for lithium and cobalt, things like that? You know, they, they have a deal now for a lithium refinery in Texas. Are we going to hear more about that? How are they going to bring those resources in? Finally, you know, that clean energy, where is it coming from? 
Batteries, mega packs. Are they gonna build more mega, mega packs? Yep. <laughs> yep. That's what I want to hear all about. I don't know if we will. I don't know if investors are gonna be disappointed. This is the third iteration of Tesla's strategy, and our chart of the day shows just how the company has performed under its previous plans. Now, the first plan was implemented in 2006, well before the automakers' automakers 2010 IPO. Now, the second in 2016 laid out plans for what became its Model 3 and Model Y cars. So, a lot of expectations here. Now, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is saying the EV maker's new master plan will see a full release during its investor day. Here with more, Yahoo Finance's Praz Subramanian. Can't wait to see what happens here, Praz. Yeah, Rochelle, you know, we knew that investor day they were going to talk about things like capital allocation plans, uh, factory expansions, and, and that Gen 3 platform that they had mentioned, that robo taxi car. But, you know, what I expect to see more about uh, when we do have investor day and what must reveals his master plan, you know, part three is obviously we're going to want to hear more about that Gen 3 platform. You know, Musk says he wants 20 million cars made a year by 2030. That's going to require around, let's say, 12 gigafactories around the world. So I think they're going to hear more about those ex expansion plans and where those are going to be. Uh, secondly, what about needed resources? How are you going to make all these batteries for these 20 million cars? You know, they talked about uh, having a lithium, a lithium refinery down in Texas. Might hear more about how they're going to acquire more lithium and cobalt and other materials. And also for batteries that are more efficient, maybe even cheaper. Uh, storage, where are we going to store all this energy that they that needed to power uh, these cars, you know, clean energy, things like that. Maybe we're going to hear more about Tesla expanding the power packs that they use, these mega installations they use at utilities, maybe more about power walls for the home where people can store their energy at home for blackouts and for the charging the cars. Uh, and finally, where is all this clean energy going to come from? You know, in, in Master Plan Part 2, uh, Musk talked about expanding solar, expanding those kinds of installations. The company has sort of taken a step back recently and paused some of these big solar installations in the home and elsewhere. Maybe that's because they're setting up a new plan. Maybe we'll hear more about that in March. I think those are the number of things you're going to hear about, but I think that's a critical element is where is the clean energy going to come from? Now over to you guys and girls. Let me know in the comments below. What are some of the key things we'll hear about at Tesla's Investor Day 2023 where they unveil their master plan part three? And if you'd like some cheat codes in terms of how to interpret what Tesla says, here's a pro tip. Believe them. It's that simple. Believe what they say they intend on doing. That's, that's all you need to do. It doesn't mean you should blindly believe it, but instead of doing what most will, which is, oh, there's no way that's gonna be f***ing crazy. Instead of doing that, believe it and then try to disprove rather than assume that what they're saying is just not true. There's no way that's possible and dismissing it because dismissing what Tesla says they're gonna do has been a recurring theme since the company's inception. Every step of the way, Tesla has proved the critics wrong, defied expectations, followed through on their publicly stated goals and surprised just about everybody. Alternatively, you can dismiss everything Tesla says they intend on doing because after all, they are just a car company, right? And now if you'll excuse me, time to head over to Patreon so I can drop some more exclusive content. If you're not a member, you really are missing out. You can join with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment or spend your days wondering exactly what I discuss over on Patreon. So see you over there or not. Love ya.